All right, AFC Wimbledon versus Fleetwood Town. <clears throat> Week three of Football League One. Uh, AFC Wimbledon with two points right now after um, two hard-fought draws, although the second one really slipped. Uh, but we're underway here. Away days at Highbury Stadium. I mean, not too far away, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem for Wimbledon, especially with uh, no crowd anyway. So let's see how this goes. This ASC Wimbledon lineup today is featuring a special somebody, Steve Seddon. Welcome back. Uh, Steve Seddon was a uh, former AFC Wimbledon player, uh, was a key piece for uh, AFC Wimbledon's great escape in the 2018-2019 season, uh, notably actually scoring the equalizer against Luton Town. I will never forget that goal. That was uh, so emotionally stimulating. Um, AFC Wimbledon were down 2-1 against Luton uh, in a match that it was a uh, not a must win necessarily but they had to get a point out of that because they were in the relegation zone I think like two or three points clear uh, but they had a game behind the, the topmost team in the relegation zone and they got an important point ended up getting a win against Wickham Wanderers the next game and um, a draw against Bradford and they, they stayed above the relegation zone, bar zone barely and uh if they didn't get that draw against Luton Town, they would have gone relegated. Uh, as they did get a uh, goal difference, they won on goal difference against, um, uh, I, I believe it was Southern, Southern United. I'm not sure, but welcome back, Steve Seddon. Fleetwood winning a lot of the headers so far as well. I feel like this this match will really depend a lot on 50-50 challenges. Obviously, 50-50 challenges are, are important in any game. But I feel like it'll be like very important in this particular game. And so far, uh, Fleet would have had the better of Wimbledon. And that's par partly due to the 50-50 challenges being won, of course. Uh, half the battle is also Wimbledon shooting themselves in the foot defensively or uh, giving the ball away a couple times. But... Yeah, see, they just won the header right there, uh, 18th minute. It could have been a, a counterattack there for Fleetwood, or it could have been a, a chance there for Fleetwood, but luckily Wimbledon won the second chance. Truman, Connell Truman, sketchy. Blackburn 3-0 up against Darby in the 19th minute. What the hell's going on to Darby? First they lost the Luton Town, and now they're three 0 down against Blackburn. God, they're terrible. <laughs> yeah, and they won the header again. Yeah, they. I think yeah, Fleetwood had like three or four corners in a row uh, around the ninth or tenth minute, and they they just keep winning headers. Um, I mean, the, one of those corners they they won the header, bounced off a bounced off a Wimbledon player. The other one it was a Wimbledon player actually winning the header there, but. Barely, but still, though, it's just been a testament to the game so far. Fleetwood getting the better of the aerial threats, or the aerial battles. And, um, good work from Woodyard. I, oh, okay. Yeah, I thought Woodyard was able to dispossess their uh, 22nd minute. Um, he didn't dispossess him in the end, but it was good pressure from Woodyard. I've liked what I've seen from Woodyard so far. He's been um, one of uh, the few Wimbledon players that have actually been solid defensively so far and um, hasn't given the ball away yet from what I've seen. Good passes, good defending so far from one yard as that center mid uh, basically controlling the action here. Yeah, so first 25 minutes here. Nothing super significant coming from either side. I mean, you had a couple of like half half chances from Fleetwood, um, mainly mainly uh, created by Wimbledon themselves in the first ten minutes. But it, yeah, Okanson was a little off out of position there, and he got caught. Um, ooh, O'Neill got caught there though, over committing. Ooh, okay, Seddon gets it away. Well, not, a, not fully away, but then, yeah, there's O'Reilly getting it fully away. But, yeah, Luke O'Neill overcommitted that time. Um, of course, he was the one that stopped the break in the, in the first place right before that. So, good work there from O'Neill. 
But if, with the three five two though, it, like, it, I mean, you don't want to play passive defensively, of course. But if one of the three center backs gets caught out, if they like overcommit to something and they end up um, being out of position due to overcommitting, they're gonna be in trouble. That's what I really fear with this three-five-two. Um, but so far, Thomas and O'Neill doing a decent job defensively. It's just the midfield right now for Wimbledon. Um, the first half of the game, or the first half of the 26 minutes, giving the ball away cheaply a little bit. I really would, I want to see more of um, Okansen. Of course, we, we love, we love our Finnish players. <laughs> we had uh, Marcus Force on loan last season. Um, I don't remember from which team, but he was our, our leading goal scorer, actually. Uh, Marcus Force uh, on the striking position, and now we have Okansen on loan from Brentford. Um, I don't know what it is with AFC Wimbledon and Finnish players, but keep it going. Fleetwood are really putting the pressure on Wimbledon right now. And they're, Wimbledon are doing a decent job of, of uh, dealing with the pressure, aside from the first, you know, 10 minutes of the game. Um, but Wimbledon are going to have to try to find a way to break that pressure. If uh, Fleetwood just, if, if they find the ball in the midfield, if they pressure, try to work around the pressure, one-two combinations, uh, you know, like a one-two from, Long, from uh, Woody R to Longman, for example. Yeah, okay, so Kansen has the ball out wide. McLaughlin, there it is. I love McLaughlin. Gets it in. Oof. Goes beyond everybody, but... I like that play, though. Oh! Oh, shit. Okansen's deflection there went in the box. That was scary. Okansen was trying to um, intercept there, but he ended up inadvertently booting the ball into his own... Uh, 18 yard box there. Okay. Good thing Fleetwood didn't get anything out of that. Okay. Wimbledon are just trying to get all like all 10 men behind the ball here, kind of inviting the pressure a little bit from Fleetwood. Okay. Counter attack. Here we go. Longman. Let's see if he can get some su support here. Oh, Woodyard. Ah. That was such a weak effort there from Woodyard. I think that was his weaker foot. Damn, that was looking good for Wimbledon, though. Oh, Callum Bailly. What are you doing? Okay, I guess uh, Fleetwood are just going to be content for corner there. I thought for sure that... I thought for sure that player would, um, would try to whip it in the box there, so... I guess maybe there was nobody in the box, so the Fleetwood player just, just let it go out. For a corner. Free kick. Whip it in. Oof. Again. The cross goes over the head of everybody. Not over the head, but it, it nobody gets on it. It's a good tackle. Luke O'Neill. Let's fucking go. Uh, that's what I like to see. Luke O'Neill has been very aggressive so far this game. Um, of course, one time getting caught out. And um, giving Fleetwood a chance, but when he was trying to, to intercept the pass, overcommitted. But for the most part, I like the aggression from Luke O'Neill. Good tackle being won there uh, on the offensive end. Never forget that game that Wimbledon played against Fleetwood where they won 3 2. I think it was in the. Um, it was either the FA Cup or the EFL Cup, but I think it was the FA Cup. But they won 3-2 at Highbury. And uh, it was the goal of the season for Wimbledon, actually. They, they knocked it. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine passes. Shot deflected off the keeper. Rebound. It was such a nicely worked goal. Especially there was this one, like, back heel pass. And then they just, like, did another one, two. They, they shot, you know. In the end, it was... Uh, I don't remember who scored in the end, but... Yeah. All right, here's Sadden on the attack here. Sadden! Yes! Let's go! Let's go! 1 0 Wimbledon, 40th minute. Sadden playing the ball over to Piggott. A through ball. Piggott um, with his left foot plays it back to Sadden, who made a run to the center after playing it to Piggott. 
Very nice. Very nicely worked goal there. And the, the short replay here. Yeah, Seddon through ball to Pickett. And Seddon makes the run in the middle right after. Very good awareness there from Seddon. Um, to, to, to see that hole in the middle that was left after the defender was chasing Piggott. Um, yeah, the defender was chasing Piggott after that through ball. Seddon slipped into that hole. Piggott found him. Good left, left footed finish there into the bottom corner from Seddon. And uh, Seddon left footed actually? Um, yeah, he, he is left footed. So um, that was just an easy finish for him, you know. Ball was played on his left foot there from 12 yards out. He's he's always going to finish that on the bottom corner. So good goal from Wimbledon there. Wimbledon have found themselves ahead a lot recently uh, at some point in the game, whether it's 1-0 or 2-1. Um, this is where it gets shaky for Wimbledon because they get a little complacent, and that's when they start having these defensive lapses and they, they uh, allow the other team back in it. Um, you know, shooting themselves in the foot that way. So I hope that Luke, o uh, that O'Neill, Thomas, and um, O'Neill, Thomas, and Callum Bailly can can hold firm today. Uh, don't overcommit too much. Um, like Luke O'Neill, there was this one time where he tried to intercept the pass but got caught out. There was a one-two played around him, um, especially with the three-five-two. And I hope that um, that McLaughlin and Seddon can can help defensively as well. That they're very good attacking. Um, in their own right, but make sure you stay disciplined defensively here if you're Wimbledon. Especially if you're the uh, the outside mid slash outside backs. Wimbledon are going to escape with uh, 1-0 uh, deficit so far after the first half. I say escape because Fleetwood did get the better of Wimbledon in some of those, uh, some of those exchanges the first uh, 20 minutes of the game or so. Uh, Towards the end of the half, end of the half, it was Wimbledon uh, staying a little bit better defensively and uh, not giving the ball away too cheaply, getting it down a couple of times, seeing a couple chances. Longman found himself uh, on a one one v one situation, uh, shot deflected off the defender, and uh, Alex Woodyard was a very strong piece in that first half. Uh, didn't see the ball too much in the later half of the half. <laughs> okay. The last 20 minutes or so of the half, but the first 20, 25 minutes found himself on possession quite a bit, getting the ball out wide to set and getting the ball over to peg it, uh, and also defensively very strong as well. And that's what that's what you need from a from a center mid like uh, Alex Woodyard. Drinking a protein shake that I made for myself. I was a little lazy today. I just decided to. To have a little bit of a ice cream and banana and a protein shake, so <laughs> it's it's lazy, lazy kid foods. And yes, I do have ice cream for breakfast sometimes, but uh, with banana, ice cream and banana, good combination. Uh, cookies and cream ice cream though, mainly stick to vanilla flavors. If you go like chocolate or something, it's it's okay, but it's not like you know the best. And Wimbledon also have a tendency to start the season strong, but then fizzle out later on. So, if you are a Wimbledon fan, even if they do win a few of their first um, their their first fixtures, their first outings, it's still not it's still nothing's guaranteed at all. Um, so, okay, that was that was a little scary, but Truman got on the end of that uh, forty nine oh three currently. Ooh. Callum Riley intercepting there. That's what I like to see from Wimbledon. High press whenever uh, Fleet would have the ball in the back. We saw a lot of that from Fleetwood actually in the first 15-20 minutes of the game. Then they they kind of stopped piling on the pressure as much. Or they, they, they slowed their pressure down. But when they had the ball, of course, they were still pressing Wimbledon. Um, you know, Wimbledon playing their, their typical style, just sitting back. Uh, waiting for the counter, um, but in terms of uh, pressure off the ball, Fleetwood didn't have as much of that, and it was starting to shift a little bit. Wimbledon started to press a little bit more. Now it's kind of even, but Wimbledon have had several great escapes, actually. Well, the, the real great escape was uh, the 2018-2019 uh, season. 
uh, when they they uh, they tied against Luton Town. They beat Wickham Wanderers. You know, they had a couple of wins before that as well. Um, that was the true great escape. And then after that, 2019, 2020 season, it wasn't a great escape necessarily. They were like, they were in the relegation zone um, for some of the season, and then they were like the top most part of the relegation zone for the most part. And then they went up for a few games, and then boom, season ended. COVID. Uh, they were right above it. Tramir got relegated instead of them. I do not want to experience the day where Wimbledon get relegated. And you know what? I don't think they'll get relegated this season. I'm not saying that as a uh, as a Wimbledon fan. I'm not trying to not trying to be biased towards them, but I don't think they're going to be relegated. They have a lot of upside. Um, I think what was holding them down in the past was um, having the the older veterans in the team for for too long. You know. Um, you know, your, your Scott Wagstaffs, um, your Mitch Pinnocks, while they are decent players in their own right, having them for that long and not providing too much, um, you know, it, it weighs them down. So having a lot of, like, signing a lot of new young players like Ethan Chislett, uh, Ryan Longman, etc., uh, allows for a new change, you know. It also gives them more energy. It gives them uh, more youthful exuberance. And it gives them a different style. It gives them, you know, um, while they're, they're still going to play the three-five-two, their style of football will be slightly different. It'll be less of uh, less hoofing the ball up and more possessing, you know, possessing with their players like uh, Chislett and Woodyard, by the way, who's our center mid, a rock in that center mid, um, you know, and Ryan Longman, a striker, to provide more solidity alongside uh, Joe Pickett. So. A lot of upside. I don't think they're going to get relegated. I saw a few people on YouTube predicting uh, Wimbledon to be relegated. One YouTuber, I'm not going to name, but uh, getting last, like, that that's that's harsh, man. Predicting Wimbledon last with this much upside, nah, that's, that's harsh. That's real harsh on them. My honest opinion is I think they'll place, I'm going to say 18th or 17th. Um, but if they keep playing the way they're playing, and God forbid they don't they don't have any defensive lapses, if they don't have too many defensive lapses, I'm gonna say they're gonna place top 14. I know that that sounds crazy, but top 14. But their defense is what really holds them back. So I'm gonna say 18. So now we're in the 43rd minute here. I'm sorry, 53. 53:20 is what I'm at right now. Actually, I was a second ahead. 53:20. Four. That was close. What an absolute banger of a strike from that man. I don't. I don't even know his name. Um. But basically, yeah. I'm looking at the replay here. It was just a short corner, easy short corner. Number eleven for Fleetwood played it out wide. One touch. Number three. That was really close. That that was a hell of a strike, I must say. But. Off the uh, the top right hand corner of the frame, off the crossbar. What do you call that? If it hits the the top corner of the goal frame, is that off the bar or off the post? It's off the bar, because it hit it hit more the top of the the bar than it did the post. So I'm gonna say off the bar there. And Truman again, uh, probably didn't expect that back pass. Hey 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 hey, a little bit of a shove there. I only saw the second shove. I didn't see the first one. I think McLaughlin might have initiated that. I didn't see that. Oh, yellow card for both of them. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah, Connell Truman, I don't think he expected that. And then when he tried to clear it, he kind of whiffed it. A little a little uh, sketchy so far from Connell Truman. He's already had a couple of those moments so far where he kind of whiffed the clearance. Um, again, Fleetwood... Okay, that... Nothing comes of that chance, but Fleetwood have been winning a lot of the headers, whether it's in the midfield or if it's um, whether it's like a ball in the midfield, a 50-50, or if it's a ball in the box whipped in from Fleetwood. They've been winning a lot of the headers. That's one thing that I'm worried about uh, going forward in this particular matchup, at least. Oh, okay, Piggott. Piggott wins that one. Yeah, Wimbledon, they're they're playing like a glorified 5-3-2 here. Even though they are starting off at a 3-5-2, uh, 
they only play at 3-5-2 if they're on the ball. If they're off the ball, though, then either McLaughlin or uh, Seddon will make their way back really quickly, and they'll just have all 10 players sit behind the ball. Um, you know, it, it's good for their defensive solidity to have all their players behind the ball whenever, whenever possible. It's just the counterattacks when they give the ball away cheaply and uh, the likes of McLaughlin and Seddon are not able to get back quick enough, that's when they're in trouble. And Wimbledon, one key to success is not giving the ball away too cheaply. Uh, just limit the turnovers, especially if in a 3-5-2. If you turn the ball over and you're playing a 3-5-2 formation, really unforgiving. And they give it, gave it away there. Pickett gave it away. Or it wasn't a giveaway from Pickett. It was a pass to Pickett. Good block there from O'Neal. O'Neal has been another one too. O'Neal has been solid. O'Neal has been absolutely solid so far. But yeah, it was a giveaway there. Uh, Piggott was trying to receive the ball there, but I don't, I don't, I couldn't see who who um, passed the ball there. But a little bit of a forced error there, or unforced error, I should say, but a forced pass, I guess you could say. Uh, nah, Piggott, nah, you're not gonna win that foul. <laughs> you're not gonna win that foul, Piggott. Um, Piggott at times goes down a little easy. Not that he's a diver. But there are times in which uh, whenever there is contact initiated, he will go down. And I think that was one of those moments right there. Ooh. Seddon overcommits. Okay. Yeah, Seddon was never going to get to that, but I think he, he thought that he could. And, um, yeah, chance there for Fleetwood. Luckily, uh, Truman gathers. Truman has been fairly solid in this half at least. Aside from the uh, the one whiff that he had, as well as the whiff that he had in the first half, but um, yeah, Colin Truman, of course, on loan from from Birmingham, uh, not a keeper to scoff at for sure. Um, every once in a while, he 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 has these performances where you know you wish he could do better, but for the most part, decent keeper, decent. I'm not gonna say. I'm going to say I'd prefer Aaron Ramsdale, personally, and Aaron Ramsdale during that great escape. Luke O'Neill overcommits. Oh, God. Good save. Very good reaction save there. Yeah, um, Luke O'Neill. Again, these these exchanges when Wimbledon think they can get the ball. Yeah, yeah, O'Neill overcommits hard there. Just, um, you know, that... that, that the, whoever was on the ball there for Fleetwood saw that coming from a mile away, just touched it around him. Easy cross in the box, you know, uncontested. If you're Luke O'Neill there, I like the aggression. I like the willingness to, to get the ball off him, but that was, he saw that coming from a mile away, just touched it around him easily. Um, really scary stuff there, but good save there from Truman. I think he was, he was waiting for like a deflection. The deflection didn't come, so he, like, for a split second, he was frozen, but then he just, you know, he patted it out um, for a corner kick. Um, good good save there from Truman. If it's a one-on-one -on -one situation like that, and you're 10 feet away from the ball, don't get a running start. Just don't get a running start and slide tackle. Only slide tackle if it's, like, you know, five feet away, or if, you, if the, the person takes, like, a little bit of a heavy touch and you can get the ball there, but... Not when the, the person has the ball like right on his foot. He's able to control his his touch, you know. He's able to change directions at any given moment. Ooh. All right, Thomas, good touch there. Good first touch. Good ball over. Oh! Mm. Longman tried to get it around the keeper with that right-footed effort. The ball coming down. Yeah. That was a really good ball there from Thomas. For, good first touch and good ball. And uh, yeah, Fleetwood, def the Fleetwood defense caught absolutely sleeping there. What a! I don't think Thomas actually intended for that to be a through ball, but yeah, Longman getting off, getting it off his thigh, trying to control the chance as much as possible. That, that keep great save, I gotta say, from the goalkeeper. Fully extended left foot there to be able to. Um... Oh, I thought Longman was gonna get on the end of that second chance after the header there. Good save again from the goalkeeper. And he taps it out. Luke O'Neill disguises it. Oh, man. 
I couldn't see who got who got on the end of that header, uh, but I thought for sure Longman was gonna tap it in on the rebound. But yeah, I'm looking at the replay here. Luke O'Neill gets gets in the box, and it was um, Joe Peggett on the header. Nobody was on that back post. I thought Longman for sure was gonna tap that in, but he wasn't in position to do so. He he had his back turned to goal. Wow. Who's what who's that goalkeeper? That guy's pretty good. I guess uh, pretty good. Alex Cairns. But they pronounce it Cairns? Cairns. Alex Cairns. Okay. That was a really good save from from uh Mr. Alex Cairns. A good double save actually. Not double save, but good save on the initial chance from Longman, good save on the header from Piggott to keep them very well in it. And I, I love myself some good goalkeeping. I am a former goalkeeper. I don't play soccer anymore, but I played goalkeeper. And tough position, honestly, because if you make one little mistake, then everyone's just going to put the blame on you. You know, it's a very tough position to play. I'd like to see Ethan Chislett come in. Uh, I'd like to see Chislett for... Oof. I'd like to see Chislett come in for Okansen. I haven't seen really too much of Okansen this particular match. Um, nothing against Okansen, but Chislett coming in, having Woodyard playing the uh, the center mid again over Okansen, who I think is playing the center mid role now. I think that would that would work for Wimbledon. Uh, having a little bit of uh, fresh legs there from from Chislett, and um, let's see. I wouldn't sub out any of the strikers. I think Longman and Piggott are both doing their jobs. I don't think you need someone like... Uh, I don't think you need Ryan Rostro right now or Ollie Palmer. Uh, we don't need a target man because they're both target men, essentially. But I don't think we need that right now. Uh, just continue to, to possess a little bit. and Well, maybe a target man because Wimbledon have you know hoofed it up the field every now and again from Fleetwood's pressure. So maybe someone to knock it down. Uh, but Pickett's been been uh, playing that role so far. Where he's gonna he's been uh, knocking the ball down or or trying to control the ball and hold the ball up for someone else to make a run. Of course, Pickett at times when he does that, he goes goes down a little too easy trying to look for a foul. But I'm not yawning because I'm bored. I'm yawning because I'm tired. So I woke up 7 a.m. to watch this game bright and early. 7 a.m. Pacific time, by the way. That was a hell of a strike. I gotta say, there were there were a couple of times in which Fleetwood had some decent chances. They went from decent chances to really good chances due to the the quality of the shots they've taken outside the box. One one of them, of course, going off the bar. That was another decent strike there. Ooh, miscommunication a little bit from Seddon, but yeah, Seddon was like, okay, I got this, no worries. If you're Truman, though, you you gotta like you gotta be firm. You gotta be like keep on, keep on. Uh, because I think Truman was kind of like in and out. He's like, should I get it? Should I get it? But good work from Seddon, not to um, because Seddon could have very well also have gotten confused and, and would have been like, okay, what do I do? In that case, if you're confused, the defender should always get the ball. If there's a miscommunication between the defender and the goalkeeper, the defender should always take initiative and just and. Get the ball away. There's someone on the Fleetwood bench who has his arms extended like this. He just keeps it out there. Legend has it. He's still extending his arms, appealing to the referee for a throw-in for their side. Okay, but now we have a free kick for Fleetwood at the edge of the, at the uh, side of the box here. This could be very dangerous. It's an in-swinger. I hate in-swingers from here. Okay, good, good header there from Peggett. Yes. Good header there from Callum Riley. Wimbledon are winning headers now. Let's go. It's It's been like 80% Fleetwood in terms of uh, headers won, but that was a very important uh, winning of the header there by Piggott as well as, as Riley to get it out. So we live and we breathe for another day. If Wimbledon can get the win here, it'll be huge. It'll be huge. Away from home. Although Fleetwood isn't, I don't think it's too far away. Uh, it's probably only like a 30 minute drive from uh, Wimbledon Stadium. Fleetwood, I think, is in London area, is it, is it not? Um, 
It is located in Highbury, London, so it's not too far away. But still, you know, it's still technically an away game, you know. Getting the win away from home would be uh, great for Wimbledon here. Okay, so I was a little behind on my uh, on my iFollow app, and it cut off at the 85th minute, and it said the event is over. And I've been waiting. At, okay, I'm recording this about 30 minutes after the game ended. And still, nothing has popped up on the iFollow app in terms of, like, the past broadcast. I don't think the past broadcast was saved this time. So, I'm going to look at the score. It was only five minutes left. You know, anything can happen in five minutes. But, three, two, one. Dons win 1-0 against Fleetwood Town. Just saw the final score. Very happy, honestly. And, um, Wimbledon should honestly be on, um seven points right now they should be on seven points right now because they let it slip last week against Plymouth I'm still salty over that but this isn't about the Plymouth match this is about the Fleetwood match and I'm I'm proud of the performance today uh, a little shaky defensively every now and again um I will say Ter Terrell Thomas has been fairly consistent as usual uh didn't really slip up too much um you know one one a few headers was really one of the only players on the Wimbledon side that won headers consistently for the most part everyone else couldn't really win a header to save their life uh Pickett won a couple but in terms of the the midfield uh battles the aerial battles were always almost always won by uh by Fleetwood but for the most part still pretty solid work defensively marking was very good uh the only times in which the defending got sketchy was when uh like O'Neill or or Callum Bay uh, mainly O'Neill though, uh, overcommitted. Like they they tried to get stuck in, but they 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 uh, dove in too much, and the the defender went around him. Even though O'Neill had the most cases of that, I still think he was very solid today overall. Um, there were times in which uh, Fleetwood got down the line, and then O'Neill got quickly back and and blocked the cross or uh, blocked a couple of shots. Um, intercepted a couple of passes, the, the ones in which he didn't get caught out, of course. Uh, there were times in which he, there was a, a pass that was made, like a like a through ball, and Luke O'Neill got his foot to it and, and intercepted. So good work from O'Neill. Aside from, I think, the two times in which he, he, got, he overcommitted and, and the defender went by him. But uh, it was good work from, it was good for work from the likes of Seddon and McLaughlin to get back defensively quickly as well. Typically in a 3-5-2, Sometimes the two midfielders out wide will overcommit a little bit and uh, defensively they don't get back quick enough. Uh, Seddon got caught out at one. There was one play in which he got caught out. But other than that, Seddon was up and down. Good work from Seddon um, to be able to provide on, on both fronts defensively and offensively. Um, Seddon offensively had some bright sparks. Of course, that goal was brilliant. Him him and Piggott combining. Uh, Seddon going uh, making a run down the line uh, and then he had the ball gets it over to Piggott um through ball to Piggott in the in the center of the, uh, in the inside the 18 yard box Seddon makes a run from the left hand side over to the middle and, and Piggott cuts it back inside for him perfect perfect play there from Wimbledon uh, McLaughlin of course always dangerous uh going down the line on the other side on the right hand side uh good work from him he, he crossed the ball a few times and most of the time, though, that Wimbledon couldn't get on the end of it, though. Unfortunately, uh, Piggott and Longman today, they're, in terms of their positioning, at times they were caught sleeping a little bit uh, when McLa the likes of McLaughlin and Seddon got the ball inside the box. Uh, for the most part, though, when they were on the ball, they were they were fairly clinical. Uh, whether it was Longman, it was a whether it was um, Longman in a one on one situation, he would like uh, cut inside and, and try to shoot. Or if it was Piggott on the ball, you know, the assist to, to set in or um, anything like that. We didn't see too many uh, chances for Joe Piggott, but he was mainly the facilitator. Uh, while Longman was the uh, the dangerous piece in terms of uh, trying to finish. Of course, Longman had that one golden opportunity from Terrell Thomas when he um, received the long ball. Brilliant first touch from, from um, Terrell Thomas, by the way. First touch... And then clears it. Tried to get he tried to get it over Longman, 
but I don't I don't think he actually meant to to play it through to Longman. Uh, the Fleetwood defense caught sleeping there, and Longman, of course, uh, gets the touchdown with his with his right thigh and tries to place it, tries to bend it around the keeper uh, to the keeper's left hand side, but the keeper extended his left foot. Very good save there, and another good save from from Pickett's header from the corner, by the way. Uh, Pickett has been very good in the air today. He won a few headers. Him and Thomas winning, you know, like 70% of the headers. Um, not too many other headers won from Wimbledon. So that's going to be uh, something to look at is winning the headers uh, and winning a lot of those 50-50s exchanges that they mainly lost out in. Um, and typically, if you lose out on the on the headers and the 50-50 exchanges, it'll allow for, for the other team to, to get some chances. But luckily... Uh, the back three was solid for the most part, uh, winning the second chances, as well as some of the midfielders as well, winning the second chances from the Fleetwood headers, winning the first one. For the most part, Fleetwood won the first uh, first headers, won the 50-50s, but then Wimbledon got on the second second balls. So overall, solid performance from Wimbledon. Very happy. And um, yeah, sorry this video is a little long. It's just I had a lot of good pointers to make. And um, yeah, I hope this video didn't get too long and drawn out, but Wimbledon, five points now, eighth in uh, eighth in the standings. And uh, as for the other results, the franchise lost again. Uh, the franchise uh, MK Dons lost today against Crew Alexandra of all teams, a team recently promoted from uh, League Two. So always nice to see an MK Dons loss. Um, also, Accrington Stanley lost today against. Uh, Oxford United and Accrington, you know, they're not like a super strong side. They're one of the relegation candidates, but um, it's still nice to look at the relegation candidates just in case, God forbid, AFC Wimbledon end up in the relegation zone. They usually start out the season strong and then kind of fizzle out. Um, but yeah, they lost. And then surprisingly, Portsmouth and um, Peterborough uh, are down there. Peterborough with three points, Portsmouth with two. So that's good because they're probably going to pick it up later in the season. So it's nice to see some of those teams, you know, drop some points early in the season, allowing Wimbledon to, you know, get up there. And if Wimbledon can maintain a good pace throughout the season, you never know. Anything is anything's possible in football. And you never know. AFC Wimbledon could very, very much make a push for the, uh, the top six. Uh, I don't know if it's top six or top seven, but... Uh, I know third through sixth or fourth through seventh will make the playoffs. I think in in League One it's going to be third through sixth. Top two will get instantly promoted to uh, the championship. You never know. Maybe Wimbledon can make a push for the top six if they keep playing the way they are and if they can, uh, you know, get a little bit better defensively. Anything's possible. So um, next week they will play against Accrington Stanley. Very winnable match for Wimbledon. I'm not going to get too cocky here because it is AFC Wimbledon after all. They're not one of the strongest teams in the division on uh, in this um, League One on paper, but they have a lot of upside and they have a lot of potential. Um, against a team like Accrington Stanley where, you know, they're, they're, they're meh. They're on the same level sort of as AFC Wimbledon on paper, but they don't really have as much potential. Uh, AFC Wimbledon have a lot of potential to be great. So I'm not trying to say this as a biased AFC Wimbledon fan, but... Uh, within the next, you know, two two years, I three years, I think they'll they'll start to make a push for promotion this season. You know, I think they'll get mid table at best, looking at it realistically. But you know, anything's possible. Um, but that'll be it for me today. I'll see you guys next time. Come on, you dons.